Okay, welcome to another Eancio video. In this video, we're going to print the score sheets out of scorecards, and we're going to enter some scores in as well. So if you've watched the previous videos in the series, you'll know that we've uh, we started in with the installation of Eancio. Then we moved on to um, creating a competition. And then uh, we looked at in the second video, or so should I say third video, we looked at the images, the sessions, field crew, subclasses and all that sort of thing down here. We had a quick look at the ANSIO protection and doing exports and imports as well. And in the last video previous to this one, we added our participants. We saw how to do that manually one by one and how to load them in as well and also how to allocate targets manually and how to uh, automatically uh, allow the system to put people on targets as well and other things such as stats and printouts and things as well. But today we're going to start off, we're going to open our WA18 competition and we're going to go straight across to the qualification menu. From here we're going to go down to scorecard printout and we're going to select that. Now on this screen, there are several options on both sides of the screen. We'll start on the left hand side here and then we'll have a look on the right hand side. So it defaults to complete score, drawing and data. Most of the time you'll probably leave it on that to be honest. Um, and if I just choose my first distance and then print scores, I'm just going to choose session one and it's going to say all targets from 1 to 24 because that's how I defined or you can change the number that you want to print in here if you just want to print one target out that's fine but what we do want to do is we want to tick the without empty targets otherwise you're going to get loads of score um, sheets out scorecards out that are just blank if you've got um, spaces that aren't filled up so if I then print scores we'll get a PDF out uh, we've got a title in here now if we had an image on the left and right we'd have it here uh, and then if we had a footer as well defined we'd have the image down the bottom so on this instance we've just got our first person here who's a compound male and you can see we've put them on 1a in this competition um, we've just got um, three arrows because it's an indoor 18 meter competition obviously if you had an outdoor six arrows the scorecard would look different and um, we've got a sum and a total and then we're counting the number of tens and nines on here as well and then finally obviously you've got the normal archer and scorer uh, sign offs on the bottom here and you'll see also there's a barcode on here at the bottom now you can turn that off so if i go back to this screen and i untick print barcode on scorecard and then i print them you'll see that the uh, you'll see that the barcode now has disappeared if you don't need it you can obviously remove other things as well you could remove the um, flags or the images or the header as well by unticking any of those boxes as well going back on the left hand side if you choose to do um, running totals as well so if I tick on that one and do my print scores you'll see there's a running total box in here as well now there's only one sort of distance in here but again if it was an outdoor say 1440 and you wanted to bring over the totals from say the 90 meter to the 70 meter etc then it would have a different a separate box at the top where you could actually um, write those scores in and then add to those scores as well If you want to print out just data, you can do that. Uh, I think these are mainly used for overlaying the data. Say if you want to print on certain um, papers or something like that. And now if we choose only target number, you'll see that we get the target number and the uh, allocation of the person's bow type and gender on there, but we don't get their name. Whereas if I go back to um, only drawings and then I run it again, we don't get the target positions. Uh, sorry, we don't get the bow types or the genders on here uh, or the name or the countries. We just get uh, A, B, C, D. So that could be quite useful if you want to create some blank score sheets 
um, to have lying around or in case you need some spares or someone else turns up or something like that on the day. So that's worth doing. Um, that's in only drawings as well. The four scores, I believe, are some sort of uh, America kind of Vegas. Um, seems like we're only counting the nines on that one. Don't know too much about that. But uh, and then finally on this side, uh, we've got the uh, running slips. So arrow by arrow ends six, uh, three arrows per end. And if I print those, you could have a running slip on here and you could cut those out um, so that arrow values were returned after every end. OK, so that's that report those scorecards should I say so I'm turning that off set that back to six uh, one of the checkbox we haven't looked at on this side is the athlete scorecard with all distances on a single page I think you can work out what that's what's going to do happen there uh, basically you would have all of your distances on one sheet it will fit them onto your sheet this time it's gone kind of landscape on me um, but if you had a, again a 1440 you had four distances it would put um, Paul Jones all four distances on uh, one sheet on a single page um, although you may not want that to happen so we'll leave that unticked and if we go down to print stickers this is another report you can get out you can see I've got stickers here with the barcodes on with the positions and then if I go for print names, this one is where it's very large text and these can be cut out and actually placed um, on the targets themselves. So that's fairly straightforward. I mean, that is it when it comes to printing the scorecards, which is great. I like it because it's nice and straightforward and not too complicated. You choose which targets you want to print out. You choose what distances, whether you want them both at the same time to print out or just one at a time and what session you want to print out and uh, whether you want empty targets or not. And then you're just ready to go. So that is everything you need to know really about your scorecards. Under qualification is qualification field of play layout. So if you click on that, you'll get a report um, showing you who's on kind of what target and what targets have kind of been allocated on that one. But if you'd move over to the competition and go down to final field of play layout under competition, you get a slightly different report. Um, this one's more for a kind of um, set up crew really the field crew um, to see how the layout of the field is going to be now obviously I've only got a few um, people on targets here but as I added more targets it would change from a portrait to a landscape print and it would look a, a, lot, a lot better but one thing to note about this is that it does tell you which is really good for the layouts no matter what kind of competition you're doing that the actual um, size of the targets the target types target face types that you entered previously uh, when you defined the competition for different um, bow types is also printed on here so the people setting it up and looking after it uh, would know what kind of faces to move or what to swap out um, and what to place on different sort of target bosses as well as I've got uh, showing the qualifications rounds and the warm-ups in the second session that I've now kind of added on here as well but that's one uh, one report worth looking at once you've kind of got towards the end and to see how the uh, field of play is actually going to um, look in the end right so that was that now let's move on to inputting scores now there's several ways to input scores um, as you'd expect so let's just go straight away to the standard table okay which is the first option now in here we've obviously got to choose our session and we're going to say which targets um, we want to enter we're going to choose the first distance now from here obviously golds and x's i'm not going to choose that because i'm going to show you what it looks like so once I've pressed OK, 
this is what I get out. Now you can see that I can't enter the tens and the nines, uh, no matter what I did. So if I tab along, it just tabs downwards instead of across to the tens and nines because I haven't ticked the gold and X's box here. Okay. While you're at it, you can also change the status to did not start or did not finish as well. If that is what's happened. So what I'm going to go back is I'm going to put that back to zero. I'm going to tick the golden X's. Just say OK. And you can see now that the tens and the nines open up. When you enter the scores on here, there are is some error checking depending on um, what round you're actually scoring. But if I enter greater than the values I've set, say 301, whereas on this one the maximum is 300, I will get a yellow uh, box that's in bold telling me that's an error. I'll put it back down to 300, which is the maximum. And then this one, again, 31 tens. We can't have 31 tens. The most we can have. Now, if you're going to set that score, you need to come back to competition, edit competition info, then go across to advanced parameters down the bottom here, and then you can set the maximum distance score and the max individual final scores here as well, as well as some other values um, that will probably be used for checking as well. Okay, so that's under competition, edit competition, competition info, advanced parameters okay so we're just going to go back to the standard table again as we did before choose my distance my golden x's and we're back here to uh, enter some scores in so if i put 250 18 say five i don't know something like that and if I come out of this, choose myself, go somewhere else, and come back in again. I said we didn't have to save this. So we'll see if I'm true. Okay, see the scores are still there. So you don't have to press a save button or anything like that. So something else I want to show you here is under the arrow value, if you set them, set all, and you can, once you've finished entering, you can say after so many arrows were shot. So in this instance, say after 30 arrows were shot, then it would set them all to 30 arrows shot. So sometimes you may see that on the Iancio uh, webpage when they're coming in live, you may say after, I don't know, 36 arrows or 72 arrows, these are the scores. Um, so that's how to set them all to say how many have been shot after you've entered all the results in. Okay, so if I set them back to zero, I'll just choose that. Okay, so that was one way of entering the scores. Now, one important thing to redo to look at on this screen before we leave it is that once you've entered the scores, but if you then come back in later on um, and you need to change any of the scores because some of them were incorrect or for some other reason, you need to remember to recalculate the distance rank at the top here and recalculate the final rank as well just so you're doubly sure um, that if that change of score that you made that you came back in to do has been uh, recalculated and that the results come out um, that are correct okay so it's just important to do that um, if we go back up here to input score um, the next option is extended table so again we'll look at our targets first distances golds you can see the uh, recalculate the distance rank and the final rank are up here as well for this screen. Now, if we had um, more than one, I'll just choose that session again. So what I wanted to show you on this screen is that if you choose um, all distances, then what you'll get out is are both sets of scores. So you could enter both sets at once instead of entering one set at a time. 
Whereas if you enter one distance, you'd only enter one set. So it's just easier um, as an extended view to be able to, um, sorry, enter all of them at once here. Whereas if we go back to our standard table, then we can only choose uh, one distance at a time. Whereas on the extended table, as you just saw, I can come in and I can choose all of my distances. Just gives you a better view and a way to enter more than uh, one set at once. Okay, so that was extended table. Now, if you're doing arrow by arrow values, first of all, let's look at the advanced user. This one, let's look at the sessions. So we've got arrows, uh, three arrows in our end for our 18 meter shoot. Um, we're looking at end one. And then you can enter uh, all three arrow, single arrow values. So um, you'll see that it'll add it up for you. Just like that. So that's a good way of doing it. But obviously it takes a lot longer time instead of just adding a total score up. But you can enter arrow by arrow values in if you want to. And again, recalculate distance rank and final rank are up there if you come back into the screen and uh, changed any results afterwards or corrected anything. So if you go to the scorecards view, I choose session one, distance one, target uh, one. And then I click on that person. What it gives me is it gives me the results in an actual scorecard view. So that's quite handy sometimes if uh, different results or things don't tie up to what you've entered on the scorecard. You could put the scorecard up to the screen um, and then just read along the rows to see if it matches or not or to see where the errors are. Um, so that's the arrow by arrow scorecard view in here as well. Obviously, you could probably enter these in as well. Imagine and it'll add them up. So you could add them in, type them in this way as well if you wanted to. Don't forget to recalculate as well. Again, if you've edited anything afterwards. Okay, so that's just another way of entering um, single arrow values if you really want to enter single arrow values. So in this video, uh, we've looked at uh, printing out our scorecards. We've also looked at the field of play kind of layout. And we've also inputted our scores in various different ways. In the next video, we'll have a look at the various uh, results that we can get out and the printouts we can get out um, from the scores as well and things like that. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon.